Hello and welcome to the second video in the build of this little thing here. This is the Armor Tank Gecko. This is the three inch version. Four inch versions will be available soon. But I've got this with all of the best components that I can get my hands on to make the ultimate three inch flyer for the winter months. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the process of kind of figuring out how everything's going to fit in. I've done some test fitting here. You can kind of see how the way it works. The nice thing about this is it has two areas to mount bits and pieces in. There's kind of a three millimeter bolt stack at the back, which is 20 millimeters designed for both the four in one ESCs and also the flight controller on top. And then at the front, we've got the space for the run cam split mini two. So in terms of where those pieces are going to go, it's pretty straightforward. The only other two things we're going to have to squeeze in here and I say squeeze, but actually there's an awful lot more room than you think inside this thing it is going to be the Team Black Sheep video transmitter that we're going to use for FPV and also the little RXSR receiver that would be able to fit pretty much anywhere in here. The way I'm thinking about it at the moment is the receiver can probably go on top of the split and the video transmitter is going to have to go towards the top of the stack uh, at the back potentially or maybe even attached to the very top deck because there's a whole antenna thing that will need to be swapped out and I'll show you that at the end of the video. So now we've got a rough idea how everything is going to go together. The first thing we need to do before we do any soldering or start to cut any wires or anything is put the flight controller onto a PC. So let me just quickly plug it into Betaflight and make sure that it's responding OK, that everything fires up OK. And the good news is I'm very pleased to report that it's working absolutely fine. Everything's pretty set up in here. There's an opportunity, because I know how I like my flight controller set up, is while I've got this thing unplugged from everything else and I'm pretty happy it's working, is to go through and have a look at how the ports are going to work. Now there are three UARTs inside this thing that I can potentially use to connect stuff to. I'm going to want to control the run cam split. I'm going to want to control the video transmitter as well and select the power and bands and other bits and pieces from the beta flight on-screen display. And I'm probably going to want to send telemetry back to the radio as well using the FR Sky telemetry. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to actually use the RXSR with the F port stuff. I'm going to wait until there's a couple of uh, published revisions of that technology out and about. Uh, but once it is, I'll do it. I'm going to use good old fashioned S bus and smart port telemetry on this. But I think I can get all that to work on this flight controller. Can't see any pins for LEDs, but I'm not bothered about that with this um, and also struggling to find where a buzzer is going to be so we're going to have to use the BL heli bits and pieces with the motors to make them act as the buzzer sounds to help me locate this because it could potentially come down in grass and disappear on me so I'm just stepping through here each of the tabs and just setting it up to the way that I know is going to work and then once I've done all that and I'm happy that the flight controller is absolutely tickety-boo then the next thing for us to do is to go and install the power system onto the frame itself. Now the motors that have come with this are quite nicely. We have clockwise and counterclockwise versions. And the way you need to install them onto the frame is so that as they're turning, as per that diagram that we've just looked at in beta flight, that they are actually tightening the prop nuts. So in the event of a prop nut getting a little bit loose, it doesn't immediately then spin the prop nut off and you lose the prop, the nuts, the little flange things that goes on the top and you have a nasty crash as well. So it's not that I don't believe the manufacturer, but I just like to double check that the screw when you screw it in is going in the right direction and to double check that what they're saying is the right way round. Once I've figured that out, then it's a, just a case of screwing those into the frame. Now the bolts that have come with these motors are perfect length, uh, potentially could be another millimetre long. If you remember, the bottom deck on this is three millimetres long, so you need uh, kind of five or six millimetre M2 bolts to put this in. And these look like they're just a fraction over five millimetres long, so that they're absolutely fine. If I had some six millimetre M2 bolts, I'd probably use those instead because I've tested those and they fit really nicely and fill up the threads on the underneath of each of these really pretty little motors. As I'm putting these motors in, I am thinking about how I can actually route the cables to produce a really tidy build. For those of you that watch me build quadcopters, you know I'm a bit of a neat freak. It does mean that some of the 
routing of cables and soldering can get very fiddly, but it does make for a much prettier model at the end. So my idea here is uh, I've just also installed the little brass posts that's going to uh, hold the run cam split. The posts come in the kit for the split that I ordered. That's actually in the box with the run cam split itself. It's the mounting hardware. And inside the little bag of bits that came from Armatan, there were some additional five millimeter M2 screws that I'm just using to hold everything in place. And that means that I can see now that the wires will route very nicely under the run cam split underneath the power distribution boards and pop out the sides so I won't have things running along the outside of the frame itself I can keep it all contained and then the motors at the back can just have a straight shot into the three connections on the side of the power distribution board and be soldered up there without any problems. There are some little plastic grommets that you plug into place on the side of the power distribution board. They take the much larger holes down to the M3 size and they're plastic as well, which I guess is there for isolation, which is a nice touch. And the other couple of things I've done, I've just cut some insulation tape in half and wrapped that around the base of each of the arms to keep those nice and neat. And also while I'm moving and tugging all the cables around, it means that I'm not going to pull the cables out of position. Last thing to do then before I put the power distribution board in is to solder all of the pads up um, using a little bit of flux just make sure there's a nice healthy clean blob of solder again using lead based solder here with a really nice soldering iron I'm actually using the Weller soldering iron here with a nice big tip it gets the heat into the pads and does a really nice job of setting them up and the other thing I've done I've also plugged in the cable that's going to run from the four in one ESCs up into the flight controller and that's going to take the battery voltage ground some of the telemetry information and also the four wires to connect up the four ESCs but we'll actually do that connection in the next video okay now we've got all that done I can actually push the four in one ESCs down onto the frame itself and then I can see exactly how long all my wires need to be and then I'm going to cut those wires off to the length, give myself another millimeter longer than I actually need. It's always better to have a little bit more than a little bit less. And then once I've done that, is tin all of those ends for those motor wires, then reinstall the 4-in-1 ESC board, and then very carefully start soldering everything together. This is really fiddly. I'm actually using tweezers here to put it in position. Because this model is so small, uh, you do have to make sure you've got lots of light. I'm wearing magnifying optics on here just to get everything nice and fit. And hopefully when it's all together, it'll look something like this. So now it's all together. That's the motors connected to the ESCs and the ESCs in place. Then the next things we can think about are gonna be installing the flight controller. Now the flight controller has these little pads on it. These are vibration isolating mounts. So I'm just going to secure the four in one ESCs with four nylon bolts. I'm gonna push the ESC down on top of it. I'm looking to make sure that nothing is touching the ESC. We want all of the leads that go to the flight controller and we don't want anything touching it that's going to transfer vibration into the flight controller after we've taken the effort of putting those vibration isolating pads on. Again, they came in the kit with the flight controller itself. And we can also just test fit and make sure that we have lots of clearance around the run cam split that's going to fit in the front of the model. And the good news is it absolutely does. So that is about halfway there. That's all the really tricky stuff done. The next is just lots and lots of wiring and some basic setup. So for those of you who are interested, um, the weight as it stands right now is 136 grams. The extra couple of bits and pieces I've got to put in, the video transmitter and also the receiver as well, uh, wired up is about another 11 grams. So all in all, we're about 147 grams. So with smart battery selection, uh, we may be under 250, but I think with a 4S battery, we're probably going to be slightly over. So join me in the next video where we're going to just connect those couple of wires from the 4-in-1 ESC onto the pads, onto the flight controller itself. We're also going to install the receiver and the video transmitter as well. And we're also going to pop in the run cam split. The only change I've made from the way that this model comes from Armatan is I have replaced the metal bolts that are at the back that hold the flight controller and the 4-in-1 ESCs with some longer nylon bolts 
The main reason for that is I might want to make a little deck at the top to hold the video transmitter. Still not sure exactly how that's going to go together. We can have a look at that in the next video. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless 360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.